we get started, water tank is about empty, and I think, I think I'm getting low on diesel. Better check before we get started. Yep, getting pretty low. Who put that fan there? <laughs> All right, need more room in here. I need a bigger building for the sawmill, but more importantly, I need another building for all these tractors to go in. That's the first thing we're gonna work on this year. As far as the major projects go, is a proper pole barn for the tractors. I've said it many a times, the best lubrication for your blade, in my opinion, come on now, camera's on, make me look like I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Never fails, something goes wrong every time I push record. But uh, anyways, in my opinion, the best thing for your blade lubrication, as far as what works better than anything, is diesel. But it does have a few drawbacks. This is a nice white oak. It has two issues we'll talk about in just a second, but other than that, it's a really nice log and uh, it should yield some nice boards today if my strategy works. You know what this means? We've got some dark discoloration right there at the pith and some more right there. And since this is the butt cut of the tree and not the second or third cut, that's pretty much gonna guarantee we're gonna have some metal in this log. I'm going to ignore the pith and we'll eventually saw this out in a four by four or maybe a five by five and totally discard it for firewood. It's pretty much useless anyways. We're gonna put this on the bottom. So after I square up this log, I'll rotate it actually before we saw into it on the first face, I'll rotate this up to it's about right there. So we'll make a cut right here, right here, and right here, and get three squared up faces to saw lumber off of on each side. I can't quarter saw this because the pith is really off-centered on both ends. If it wasn't for that, we would just split it out and quarter saw it. So we'll go ahead and square up those three faces, leave this right here alone, and put it on the bottom of the sawmill, and I'll be sawing down toward the pith and stopping before we get to the juvenile core on all three faces, getting the widest, best boards possible. And then we'll flip it up on this face, which the metal will be right here at that point. And we'll saw down and probably hit the metal halfway into it. That's just the way it is. And I'm not going to discard this whole piece because it's a bandsaw mill. I can replace the blade and resharpen it and get back to work. And if I hit a nail, it's not a big deal. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. That blade has been on there for a little while. It's getting kind of dull, so if I go kind of slow on these cuts, that's the reason why. But since there's some mystery metal in this log, I kind of hate to put a brand new blade on there because sometimes you'll see a stain on the edge and you think you know where the metal is and it's actually somewhere else. And since the pith is off-center on this log, that nail could travel through the middle and come out the other side as far as the, uh, the marking goes, if that makes sense to you. You can't bet on where you're seeing the discoloration. You can plan for that, but you can't bet on it because it still could be somewhere else. So we'll leave that blade on there for now and hopefully get this log sawed up with this blade if we take our time and we don't push it too hard.
guys, here is my strategy. I'm gonna come down from that top face about six inches. You see the lumber crayon right there. That represents my cut. We'll cut that top section off. We'll flip it over on its side. We'll get this section right here cut off. Then we'll come over here and cut this section off. And that will leave us with all of the pith in the heartwood, or the juvenile wood rather, right there in the middle. And right below it, that other stain where the metal should be, who knows if it's there or somewhere else. Like I was saying earlier, you never know about this stuff. I knew that was going to happen sooner or later, but I thought on that pass I would avoid it actually. It kind of surprised me that I hit it. You never know. And people always ask me, why in the world don't you have a metal detector? Well, let's address that real fast. Let's say I had one of those fancy metal detectors like Mark DeLacy has. It looks like a, uh, almost like a half moon. And I knew there was metal in the log. You know, I saw the stains right here. There's no doubt about it. So let's say I had that and I scanned it and it showed metal being right in this section right here where the stain was, but it, it don't tell you how deep it is. So how are you gonna get that nail out of there? Are you gonna bore a hole and sit here and just try to find it? No, you're not gonna do that. If you have a circle saw mill like Mark has, you're gonna take the log and discard it because if your circle saw hits a nail, that could be several thousand dollars. And with a bandsaw, there's no need to really do that. Okay, a blade for my mill runs about $25 to $28, not counting shipping. I have sharpening equipment here, right back there in the corner in the other side of the shop. I can resharpen that blade and reset it. So if I hit a nail, I pull the nail out, I take the blade off, I resharpen it, I reset it. Later on, I put a fresh blade on there and I'm back, I'm back sawing in a few minutes. The longest part is usually using this tool to pull out the nails. So having said that, a metal detector really does you no good because you gotta saw it, unless you're just gonna discard it if it shows metal being in the log, and that's not feasible. That's why we like band saws over circle saw mills. One of the reasons is, is the, uh, the blade life, not so much the blade life, but the blade cost. You know, if we hit metal with that blade, there's no big deal. You know, that's one of the reasons why band saws are preferred by some people over circle saws. Not everybody. So, that's my spill on that. And that metal detector is several thousand dollars. I don't really need it. There we go, guys. That right there will shut you down for just a few minutes and you're back up and running. It's not a big deal. I'd rather not hit metal, but it's not the end of the world. And just so I can answer this in the comments before it comes up, this is made by Crescent. I got it on Amazon. I think it's about $30. There's a link down below if you want to go buy one. It works really good at pulling nails out of logs. It works probably 90% of the time. Sometimes I have to put vice grips on it, but most of the time this will work. It does a good job.
All right, friends, right here's where we're at. I'll probably come down and get three more boards off of this and call this camp done. I don't want to go any lower because there's our stain and I want to stay out of this juvenile wood as well. So we'll get three nice boards, then discard this one. And we still have three more camps to saw up out of this log. Thank you. 